Welcome to Morning Prayer on Monday the 9th of November and we're back here with Morning Prayer once again. Mm. Let us pray. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom. Blessed are you, sovereign God, ruler and judge of all. To you be praise and glory for ever. In the darkness of this age that is passing away, may the light of your presence, which the saints enjoy, surround our steps as we journey on. May we reflect your glory this day, and so be made ready to see your face in the heavenly city where night shall be no more. Blessed be God, Father, Son, Son and, and Holy Christ. Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. As the deer longs for the water brooks, so longs my soul for you, O God. My soul is a thirst for God, even for the living God. When shall I come before the presence of God? My tears have been my bread day and night, while all day long they say to me, where is now your God? Now when I think on these things, I pour out my soul, how I went with the multitude and led the procession to the house of God. With the voice of praise and thanksgiving, among those who kept holy day. Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul? Why are you so disquieted within me? O oh, put your trust in God, for I will yet give him thanks, who is the help of my countenance and my God. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And our psalm this morning is Psalm 19. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. One day pours out its song to another, and one night unfolds knowledge to another. They have neither speech nor language, and their voices are not heard. Yet their sound has gone out into all lands, and their words to the ends of the world. In them has he set a tabernacle for the sun, that comes forth as a bridegroom out of his chamber, and rejoices as a champion to run his course. It goes forth from the end of the heavens, and runs to the very end again, and there is nothing hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, and gives wisdom to the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, and rejoice the heart. The commandments of the law the commandment of the Lord is pure and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures for ever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey, dripping from the honeycomb. By them also is your servant taught, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often they offend? O oh, cleanse me from my secret faults. Keep your servant also from presumptuous sins, lest they get dominion over me. So shall I be undefiled and innocent of great offence. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Glory to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and, and to the, the Holy Spirit. Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Uh, we pick up the Old Testament reading in Daniel chapter 4. Then Daniel, who was called Belteshazzar, was severely distressed for a while. His thoughts terrified him. The king said, Belteshazzar, do not let the dream or the interpretation terrify you. Belteshazzar answered, My lord, may the dream be for those who hate you and its interpretation for your enemies. The tree that you saw, which grew great and beautiful and strong, so that its top reached to heaven and was visible to the end of the whole earth, whose foliage was beautiful and its fruit abundant, and which provided food for all under which animals of the field lived and in whose branches the birds of the air had nests. 
It is for you, it is you, O King. You have grown great and strong. Your greatness has increased and reaches to heaven and your sovereignty to the ends of the earth. And whereas the king saw a holy watcher coming down from heaven and saying, cut down the tree and destroy it, but leave its stump and roots in the ground with a band of iron and bronze in the grass of the field and let him be bathed with the dew of heaven and let his lot be with the animals of the field until seven times pass over him. This is the interpretation, O King, and it is a decree of the Most High that has come upon my Lord the King. You shall be driven away from human society and your dwelling shall be with the wild animals. You shall be made to eat grass like oxen. You shall be bathed with the dew of heaven and seven times shall pass over you until you have learned that the Most High has sovereignty over the kingdom of mortals and gives it to whom he will. As it was commanded to leave the stump and roots of the tree, your kingdom shall be re-established for you from the time that you learn that heaven is sovereign. Therefore, O King, may my counsel be acceptable to you, atone for your sins with righteousness and your iniquities with mercy to the oppressed, so that your prosperity may be prolonged. All this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of twelve months he was walking on the roof of the royal palace of Babylon, and the king said, Is this not magnificent Babylon, which I have built as a royal capital by my mighty power for my glorious majesty? While the words were still in the king's mouth, a voice came from heaven, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is declared, the kingdom has departed from you, you shall be driven away from human society, and your dwelling shall be with the animals of the field, you shall be made to eat grass like oxen, and seven times shall pass over you until you have learned that the Most High has sovereignty over the kingdom of mortals, and gives it to whom he will. Immediately the sentence was fulfilled against Nebuchadnezzar. He was driven away from human society, ate grass like oxen, and his body was bathed with the dew of heaven until his hair grew as long as eagles' feathers and his nails became like birds' claws. When that period was over, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted my eyes to heaven and my reason returned to me. I blessed the Most High and praised and honoured the One who lives for ever. For his sovereignty is an everlasting sovereignty, and his kingdom endures from generation to generation. All the inhabitants of the earth are accounted as nothing, and he does what he wills with the host of heaven and the, and the inhabitants of the earth. There is no one who can stay his hand or say to him, What are you doing? At that time my reason returned to me, and my majesty and splendour were restored to me for the glory of my kingdom. My counsellors and lords sought me out. I was re-established over my kingdom, and still more greatness was added to me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honour the King of heaven, for all his works are truth, and his ways are justice, and he is able to bring low those who walk in pride long reading which uh, in fact started on Saturday because the first part of chapter 4 was uh, Saturday's reading which described how Nebuchadnezzar had a dream and he was troubled by the dream. This time he was uh, happy to tell his wise men and others uh, what, the dream, what the contents of the dream was uh, mm. and after the other wise men had failed to come up with any explanation uh, Daniel who Nebuchadnezzar called Belteshazzar came forward with this uh, interpretation of the dream mm. uh, uh, and it is a, an extraordinary story yeah so Nebuchadnezzar basically lost his mind yes. he? and he went uh, out in the fields and lived like an animal which must have been very bizarre for people around him his courtiers and his 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 sort of uh, wise men and counsellors and so on, all except for Daniel, who would have known what was going on. But uh, 
I mean, even after Daniel gave him the interpretation of his dream and called on him to, uh, uh, ato to you know, uh, where is it, uh, atone for his sin with righteousness uh, and so, uh, so on, he still goes and stands on the roof of his palace and says, oh, look at all this, and aren't I amazing, aren't I mighty and glorious? And exactly what uh, Daniel had uh, interpreted from the dream came true. But Very difficult to map any of this onto the history of uh, Nebuchadnezzar. Um, a period of seven years when the, 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 the uh, king was uh, not available mm. would lead to a great uh, destabilising in the society. Yes. Uh, it wouldn't have been allowed to carry on like that. There are yes. a few little clues that there, there's some other quality. The Holy Watcher coming down from heaven and saying, cut down the tree and destroy it. Um, this is um, later literature looking back at a particular time and mm. seems to have a, uh, quite a lot of more theological intent than historical narrative yes. that is, is, is there. And of course Nebuchadnezzar was king of Babylon, we've yes. heard mention of Babylon there, and uh, the Jewish people including Daniel had been brought uh, from Judah into exile in Babylon. So this is during the period of the exile, isn't it? So when it says a stump will remain, my mind immediately went to stump uh, from the, uh, the root of Jesse and so on, but this isn't uh, that no. <laughs> stump because Nebuchadnezzar is king of Babylon. He's not the, the, the king of uh, Israel or Judah. Uh, so the root of Jesse that is referred to uh, is a separate uh, and the book of line, Daniel, a, a separate line of kings. Yes, and the book of Daniel is written mm. a lot later on, looking back at the time of the exile. Mm. And because the Hanging Gardens of Babylon were one of the wonders, wonders of the, of the world. ancient world, so um, the, the idea that the king will be standing there taking pleasure on the roof of the royal palace makes perfect sense mm. to anybody who knew the ancient world. Yeah. It appears that he did learn his lesson. He's praising and glorifying God and giving honour to God at the end. Yes. Mm. I will make, make a way, way in the, the wilderness, wilderness and rivers, rivers in, in the, the desert. desert. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth, do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people. The people whom I formed for myself, that they might declare my praise. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the, the Son, and, and to, to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and shall, shall be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And Revelation chapter 5. Then I saw in the right hand of the one seated on the throne a scroll written on the inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look into it. And I began to weep bitterly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to look into it. Then one of the elders said to me, do not weep. See the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David has conquered so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders, a lamb standing as if it had been slaughtered, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of the one who was seated on the throne. When he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell before the lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense which are the prayers of the saints. They sing a new song. 
you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals. For you were slaughtered and by your blood you ransomed for God saints from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests serving our God and they will reign on earth. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They numbered myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands singing with full voice worthy is the lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honour and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them singing to the one seated on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honour and glory and might for ever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the angels fell down and worshipped. It's a glorious picture. <laughs> it, it is a fantastic picture and, and Revelation is so misunderstood generally that here is a, uh, a book about Jesus, from Jesus, celebrating Jesus and uh, at this point uh, John has had heaven opened to him. He's been drawn into the world of heaven and he's seeing what's going on. What's going on in the, somebody described it as the control room for the earth. Uh, and uh, there's this problem because there's uh, the seals which are to form a large part of the narrative of, of the book of Revelation as the seals are opened one by one. Um, but they're around a scroll, but who's worthy to do this? And uh, nobody comes forward. And then there's assurance that it's all right because the lion of the tribe of Judah uh, will be able to do it. And John looks and watches and sees not a lion, a lamb. but a lamb mm. who comes forward. And as the lamb comes forward, before anything else happens, there is this crescendo of worship. And I uh, couldn't help thinking that it contrasts with our inability to join in together in some worship in church. We don't go to church at all at the moment, but uh, myriad and myriad, thousands of thousands of them. It must have been, uh, for, for John is describing, a fantastic vision. Mm. And as we continue to read the Revelation over the next few weeks, uh, we, we open the scrolls, uh, open the seals, and uh, come further into it. Mm. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. My lips shall proclaim your faithfulness. The heavens bear witness to your wonders. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. The assembly of your saints proclaims your truth. My lips shall proclaim your faithfulness. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. My lips shall proclaim your faithfulness. And the Benedictus. You will, will guide, guide us with your, your counsel, counsel, O God. And, and afterwards receive us with, with glory. glory. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy pro uh, prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. To show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies. Free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way. To give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. To shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father and, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, it as it was in the, the beginning, beginning, is now, and, and shall, shall be forever. Amen. 
you will guide us with your counsel, O God, and afterwards receive us with glory. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we do pray for the United States of America in the aftermath of the election. We bring before you the uh, huge changes that are lying before the country and in many ways lying before the world as well. And we pray for the uh, next uh, two and a half months, the transition period. We pray that uh, despite all the uh, current signs that it may be accomplished in a way that is uh, good for the United States and good for our world. And we pray for uh, Joe Biden that you would equip him for the task that lies ahead, equip him spiritually as he comes before you in prayer and equip him with all the information and briefing that he needs in order to be able to offer wise leadership. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Oh Lord, as we sit here um, back doing morning prayer in this way rather than with others in church, uh, we, uh, we bring before you, Lord, all the different effects that this new lockdown uh, is having. We pray, Lord, for those who are um, desperately worried about the effect on their businesses and on their jobs uh, and on their families. Uh, we pray, O oh Lord, for those who are uh, fearful of another month of loneliness. Uh, and we pray, Lord, for all of us who are uh, to different degrees fearful of uh, the virus. And Father God, we pray uh, for all who are fearful, for those who are angry and for those who are relieved. Uh, such a mixture of uh, reactions to this new lockdown. Father God, we do pray that you would keep us all safe and we pray, Lord, that we will all get on with uh, uh, observing the the new the restrictions lord and uh, working together for the good of one another so lord we bring this time before you and we pray that it will be effective in uh, uh, slowing down if not uh, halting the spread of the virus so that those who are uh, treating those who are sick those who are um, uh, researching into the virus and the cure uh, will be able to have uh, a bit more uh, time and space in which to do this. So Lord we, we bring ourselves and uh, uh, our whole country before you Lord in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. And Heavenly Father we pray particularly for our local schools with all the concentration on keeping education going we pray for our preschools and nurseries for the primary schools, for the secondary schools, after school clubs. Father, we pray that as each considers their particular challenges and opportunities, that you would be giving wisdom to those who run them and those who work within them. Pray, Heavenly Father, for due regard for uh, teachers, support staff, as well as for the children and their parents. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that as we look at St James's Primary School, that they will know your hand of blessing upon them at this time. Amen. Amen. And Lord, we pray for all the different churches as they uh, um, quickly reorganise and uh, as we have done, start uh, having services online. We know some churches have continued uh, to have online services and not been able to uh, 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 open their doors but uh, now Lord all all of us have gone back to had to go back to this this form of worship so Lord we pray for all the different church leaders uh, as they uh, um, uh, work out go back maybe to uh, doing uh, services uh, online and uh, reaching out to uh, members of their church families in this way. 
and we do pray, Lord, for um, uh, renewed energy uh, and vision and inspiration. Uh, none of us wanted to be back here again, but uh, we just pray, Lord, for for your guidance uh, and yes, for your inspiration uh, in this time, and that you would bless. Uh, the work and worship of all your churches. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Almighty Father, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of all, govern the hearts and minds of those in authority, and bring the families of the nations, divided and torn apart by the ravages of sin, to be subject to his just and gentle rule who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Uniting our prayers with the whole company of heaven, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as, as we, we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May Christ, who has opened the kingdom of heaven, bring us to reign with him in glory. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.